Lesson 12 is on phases and properties of matter. So we're going to talk about solids, liquids, gases, aqueous, and standard temperature and pressure. So solids. A solid is a state of matter characterized by particle arrangements such that their shape and volume are relatively stable or definite. Uh, the particles of a solid tend to be very compact um, and very close together. They are vibrating in place. So examples of this would be NaCl, which is salt, and it's a, in solid form. We have iron, uh, and we have solid water, right, or ice. They're always, when you look at the chemical compounds, told to be a solid based off of the symbol after each compound. Liquids are the second state of matter, and these are incompressible, meaning you cannot squeeze them, you cannot make them smaller than what they are. They always take the shape of its container and is the only state with a definite volume, but not a fixed shape. Liquids are composed of tiny vibrating and sliding particles. That's why they slosh around each other. A distinct property of a liquid is what we call surface tension, which leads to what we call the wetting phenomenon. When you stick your finger in a glass of water, surface tension takes the water droplets and sticks it onto your finger, and it's wet. Yay! Whenever we have a liquid, we will also make sure you add the L after every chemical name or formula. We're going to talk about gases, which are states of matter consisting of particles that have neither a definite shape or a definite volume. Uh, they will completely fill any container that they are in. Gases are fast-moving particles that have no attachments to each other. Because of this, gases can be compressed into containers under pressure. We can also say that they are gases because of the fact that they have lots and lots of space between them. Now, the way that we signify a gas is by the little letter G with the parentheses, because the little letter G on its own is just grams. Here's some particle diagrams that show the differences between gases, liquids, and solids. As we said, solids are highly compacted. That is why every one of these guys are touching each other. Notice there's very little space. With the liquids, you'll also notice that there are more spaces between them, and they're not geometrically regular. Remember, liquids and solids cannot be compressed because of how close they are together. When now we look at the gases, first off, there's a top to this chamber. Otherwise, they would escape. You would also notice that these gases have a very far distance from each other. And as Ms. Diamatopoulos just said, gases are the only ones that are compressible because of the fact that they have so much space between them. Aqueous phase is when matter, solid, liquid, or gas has been dissolved into water. When a chemical species has been dissolved in water, it is represented by writing a AQ after the formula. Um, and then, like the examples that you see, you have NaCl aqueous, which means it's NaCl or salt mixed into water. Remember that aqueous is also known as a solution, so it's homogeneous mixture. Looking at your reference table, let's find table A. Table A talks about what is standard temperature and pressure. All of the elements in their phases of matter are registered at STP. I want you guys right now to, with a highlighter or a color pencil, highlight all of table A. This information is going to be incredibly useful in the future. So before we have to guess about what phase of matter an element is at STP, why don't we figure out what is standard temperature? All the elements on the periodic table are registered at zero degrees Celsius or 273 degrees Kelvin. So with that information at hand, let's go back to reference table S. That's the big gigantic chart right after the periodic table. When you go to table S, you will find these two columns. You will find melting point in Kelvin and boiling point in Kelvin. 
all of the numbers that are listed right there from the top from hydrogen towards the bottom and phosphorus are the points that they either melt at or boil at. So the very first thing you have to do to determine what phase of matter it is, is to start with the melting point. If the given temperature is lower than the melting point, so if you're at STP, if your temperature is lower, then that means it's going to be a solid. If STP is greater than the melting point, that means it's a liquid. When you have done both of those, you go over to the boiling point. If the given temperature is lower than the boiling point, then it's going to be a liquid. But if the given temperature is greater than a boiling point, it is considered to be a gas. So let's try to determine the phase of matter for the following elements at STP. So use table A, use table S, and the rules that we provided. So when we look at beryllium, beryllium is considered a solid at standard temperature and pressure. Argon is a gas and bromine is a liquid.